been, well, before we got here, relatively chill and calm. <laughs> yeah. So all those big guys, the big black guys, okay. all there. Come on, I know. Come on, Benjamin. Come on, Benjamin. Come on, Benjamin. <laughs> Yeah, so the big guys are going to eat the big family. They're actually uh, vegetarian. So they have about um, 10 to 12 types of piranhas about how much meat they like. These guys, they like about 80% veg, 20% meat. So part of the fun is trying to get the food down to the stingrays because uh, the Paku will just try to steal all the food. Um, they also live pretty long as well. We've got one in here called Percy. And he's 30 years old and he's the biggest one in here. And he's been with us long enough. So he comes up and uh, oh look, he's got a little bit of food in the field. Wow, he's I've lost him, he's gone. He's up. There you go. Just chuck a bit of food in his mouth. Yeah, a lot of people don't realise quite how long he's actually lived for. Uh, anyway, so yeah, back to the uh, the freshwater stingrays. Uh, so these guys work just like stingrays uh, out in the ocean, except they like to live in freshwater. So they've got all the same features. If you look uh, sort of north towards the end of their tail, they've got a little barb like this sticking up, and that is their sting. Um, so they only like to use it if it's a matter of self-defence. So if they think they're about to, you know, they're going to be eaten or it's game over, then they'll lash out with it. Um, Otherwise, they're pretty chill and calm. I go snorkeling in here to clean the windows, and they're absolutely fine. I just make sure definitely not to stand on them, because that might hurt. Uh, but if you do get stung by a stingray, there's a bit of a myth that the best thing to do is to wee on it. Don't do that, unless you really don't like whoever's been stung, and go for it. Uh, but otherwise, the, uh, the best thing to do is to put it in as hot water as possible. Uh, and this will start to break down the venom. Uh, and what's also really cool about the freshwater stingrays, um, they don't lay eggs like other stingrays, they do give live birth. They actually have sort of slight umbilical cords, so that little black dot in the middle is his belly button, uh, which is really cute. So they've all got little belly buttons, uh, which is just adorable. Uh, so at the moment, Josh is also feeding our red-tailed catfish. These guys are monsters. They get a little bit bigger than this in the wild, uh, but you can buy them in pet shops when they're about three inches long for about a fiver each and, and that's exactly what happened with these guys these have been donated to us somebody bought them uh, yeah. they then grew a little bit wow. ate all the other fish in his tank uh, and they had these three massive fish he didn't really want anymore so he did how, and, old, how old is that one uh these guys are about 10 15 years old yeah mm. they're pretty pretty old and they'll again live to be about 30 ish 20 30 years old keep them right um, so yeah bought them didn't want them anymore Thank can you guys them. take them yeah we've got a tank big enough so like, I, I like keeping fish, obviously, I work at an aquarium, but if you guys have any fish at home, just make sure you do your research beforehand so they all don't get eaten by things like this, or you just know how big they're going to grow as well. Because uh, that's quite a big issue. A lot of the other guys in here have been donated as well. Like uh, this lovely silvery fish. This is Puff. She's our silver arowana. Uh, she's actually got um, something called look down syndrome. So if you look at her eyes, they're always looking down. And this is because she wasn't fed right when she was younger. Uh, so arowanas are incredible predators. They've been known to jump into the bottoms of small trees, overhanging branches, and grab monkeys and birds in flight, and just nab them out of the water. So her eyes are meant to always be looking up. And, but her previous owner was always feeding her from below the water level. So she was always looking down. She didn't develop the strength in her eyes to look up. Uh, but she still feeds absolutely fine. She can still sense what's going off around her mouth. But they're, um, inc like I say, incredible predators. They've got um, a really cool adaptation, which lets them gulp a little bit of air. Uh, and there's, this is really useful when the, the Amazon floods, because there's not as much oxygen in the water then. There's not so much flow. You end up with a lot of stagnant areas. So all the other fish who can't gulp air, they get really sleepy, really chilled out. Uh, but the arowana gulps down that air, gets a little oxygen boost, and is super awake and ready to go. And it's just easy pickings then for all those sleepy little fish. Uh, so, really cool predator. So hopefully she'll come close in a minute and we'll give her a bit of food. Uh, who else have we got in here? Oh, Hippo, our lovely ripsaw catfish. Um, um, but yeah, so Hippo is a ripsaw catfish. So cool because of those incredible jagged scales down, uh, down his sides. 
Uh, so these scales are for self-defense. Uh, anything trying to bite it, eat it, has got to go across those, and they're pretty sharp. There's some tribes in the Amazon who use those uh, scales as uh, arrowheads, so they're really potent stuff. Uh, but hippos are vegetarian, otherwise just goes around kind of cruising, eating a little bit of veg. So the last uh, last guys I'll talk about in here are terrapins, so we'll be feeding them in a minute as well, once we've uh, gotten through to all the other fish, because they're always hungry, they're always hanging around. So the terrapins, again, these are all donated to us, and I did, like what I said earlier, most animals in here you can find on the Amazon. These guys you actually find up in North America, sort of around Florida and Mississippi. Um, so these guys, little river turtles, uh, again, all of these have been donated to us. Somebody got them as pets, didn't want them anymore. Um, and rather than just chuck them out in the wild, which some people have done, they've decided to give them to us, which was definitely the right thing to do, because there's actually a little bit of an issue with these guys out in the wild. Uh, they're an invasive species, which means they can survive out in the wild and they're competing with other local uh, inhabitants. So there's actually, if you go out in Cornwall, there are places where there's surviving populations of them, so you can go and find them out in Cornwall, where there just shouldn't be turtles. Um, oh yeah, turtles, terrapins, interchangeable. Only in English do we call them terrapins. Everywhere else, it's just all turtles. Um, but yeah, like I say, um, because that is become such a problem, uh, you now can't buy these guys as pets anymore because so many have been released into the wild. There's other little turtles you can get, uh, like musk turtles, who are still really cool and have great personalities, uh, make great pets. So again, it's just doing that research before you buy anything. But they are, oh, I love the terrapins. Uh, so there's one in particular who's quite cheeky. So most of these are yellow-bellied mudsliders, uh, but there's two in here who are red-eared yellow-bellied mudsliders. They have little red stripes down the side of their head. Uh, and the one with slightly darker stripes is called Vamos, and she is the naughtiest turtle in the world. Whenever anybody gets in here, she is on them straight away trying to bite their ankles, like actually bite them. Um, yeah, so this is her now. She's just biting the other turtles for the hell of it. So we can do just this one through. Yep, yeah, see, finger, that's tasty. No, it's not. Um, yeah, we've got tweezers for her. But um, yeah, she has to come out into a little time out bucket because she's just terrible with the divers. She just will not leave them alone. She'll try and bite ears and hair. Uh, very cheeky. But all of them are quite naughty. Uh, their favourite thing to eat in the world is this lovely purple bush, uh, which they can only reach when we're topping up the water. Uh, and so when the water level does get really high, you can start to see them like underneath it all getting ready at all. Come on guys. Um, and they'll start paddling and jumping out and it's, it's hilarious. Uh, so you'll see that in a minute as well when we um, get a bit of food in for these guys. Uh, otherwise, I think I'll leave it there. We will be hanging around a li little while. We've still got a bit more food to give them. But otherwise, thank you very much for listening. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And if you've got any questions, do feel free to ask us. Uh, but yeah, thanks. We really do appreciate you coming along to uh, listen and enjoy the place. So thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Ah, so this is the terrapin food. Turtles have little red dots on their back. Uh, it's a little bit of nail on if you put on just so we can tell them apart. They've all got a little red dot in a different spot. Um, on top of that, they've all got different belly markers as well. Quite cool. They're all slightly different. Um, so there's a little one down there. That's Rapido. He's uh, Vamos's boyfriend, but she never pays him any attention. Uh, but he's just looking at that food. He's trying to get through something. That's why you don't put your fingers in the tank. Yeah, yeah just keep pulling Josh, he'll let go. <laughs> <laughs> that how they are?